902 and Ostar Ian Ziering is breaking his silence after he was attacked by a group of bikers on New Year's Eve in front of his daughter. Lisa Vanderpump has revealed her new teaser trailer for Vanderpump Villa, which is coming to Hulu. And is Mia from Potomac engaged? Not engaged? I don't really know what's going on, but we're going to get into it. All right, let's get it. Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter, pop culture junkie, reality TV insider, published author, and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here, I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. Happy, happy new year. Happy new year to you. Happy, happy new year. Woo hoo hoo. Um, I'm starting off the new year a little, a little achy. Remember how I kept telling you guys, I was like, I'm going uh, orange there and I'm going hard today. I'm going hard today. I'm going hard today. Well, I went a little too hard too many days and now I, I, I broke a hip. Is this, this is what it is. I turned 30 and now I broke a hip. Um, I didn't literally break my hip, but I strained my hip flexor. So the inner hip, like my, my groin area um, is hurting and not in ways people like to be hurt in their groin area. It hurts. I can't walk. And I like kept trying to still go to the gym in spite of it. And I kept telling myself, I'm going to go easy today. I'm going to go easy today. And I would still fucking go hard. And now my body's like, listen, bitch, we tried to warn you. And now somebody needs to get you a life alert. So my life be alerting me that I need to take a little break. So I'm going to have to tone it down at the gym. Maybe just do a little upper body. That way I can keep the gun show going. You know, we want to make sure the guns are still gunning all the things. Um, oh, look at that. Mm. Um, but oof, it is very painful. It hurts to walk. It hurts to sit. It hurts to live. <laughs> so if anybody has any suggestions, um, like I said, it's the inner part of my hip. It started as like the outer part, like very briefly, kind of just like a little achy. And then now the inner part of my hip is just hurting. Um, hurting like an old lady. But... Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a wonderful start to the new year thus far. I hope you guys um, are excited about the year ahead. I don't know if anybody's making resolutions or not making resolutions. I don't make resolutions. Um, I like to just make lifestyle changes little by little. So that's just what I do consistently in, in this past year. Like I said, I got my Invisalign. I still have six months to go, but like, look at that. My teeth are little by little getting there. About six months left um, on my Invisalign. LASIK is finally fully healing um, in my vision. I can see clearly now the lasers are gone. But it's been my year of me. Get ready because tomorrow, just get ready. I have something interesting that you're about to see tomorrow um, that I haven't told anybody about. But uh, should we get into all the tea? Yes, I've been doing Epsom salt baths. Thank you, guys. I've been trying to do Epsom salt baths. Um, ibuprofen, yeah, I'm going to need to take a lot of ibuprofen. Um, a little yin yoga. Yeah, I'm going to just have to do some yoga stretches and some upper body workouts until my hip heals, which makes me sad. But, yeah, I didn't realize I was going to be that bath kind of bitch. But now it's New Year and I'm that bath kind of bitch. Okay, let's talk about Ian Ziering. I don't know if you guys remember him from... 902 and out. Has he been in anything else? I really feel like that's his biggest uh, his biggest claim to fame is 902 and out, or that's mostly what people know him from. Um, oh, no, he was also in Sharknado. That was his other big breakout role. Sharknado, Sharknado 1, 2, 3, 4. Wow, they have Sharknado 5. Remember when Kim Richards was in Sharknado and she got eaten by the shark? That was great. We need to bring her back. I love when they have housewives in movies. Um, wow, he, he was in Swamp Thing. He was in... Lava Lentula. Okay. Um, oh, he was in the last Sharknado, which was Sharknado 6. Sharknado 3. Oh, hell no. I think that's when Kim Richards is in. She's either in 2 or 3. He was in Zombie Tidal Wave. Oh, and then he was also, he did Shark Storm, which was Shark Week. Look, would you look at that? It's got quite the eclectic, quite the eclectic, uh, Film career, doesn't he? 
He was on Dance with the Stars. Wasn't that recently? Wasn't it like last season that he was on? Well, there we go. Anyway, he was out in Hollywood on New Year's Eve, which was on Sunday. Out in Hollywood with his daughter. I don't know what they were doing exactly, but um, they were out and about driving down. It looked like Hollywood Boulevard. TMZ released footage. He seemed to have gotten into some sort of argument or altercation with this group of bikers that was in front of his car. Next thing you know it, he pushes one of the bikers and then they all just come in and just start going ham on him. And they're all beating him up. And then everyone's filming. Everyone's like, oh, and his daughter's there. And he's by the car. He kind of like has an altercation with them. They start beating him up against the car. And then he runs away from the car. And then they start chasing him down to the, it looked like the Hollywood Walk of fame where they have all the stars he runs across he dashes across the street as they're kind of chasing him and they're beating him up and there's even a lady there and she was a hefty hefty hippo and she was like trying to bang him with her phone and i was just like wow it was very very aggressive like um i get it he pushed one of them so like yeah that guy's gonna get into a fight but like they just all went mauling on him and then people are filming them and taking pictures i don't think they realized it was ian zering they probably don't even know who ian zering is um I just, they're, they're bikers. I, I don't take it. They were big 902 and 0 fans in the 90s, 80s. Um, so, yeah, they were all just, I, I take it they didn't know who it was. But once they saw all the phones were on them, and you can see homegirl, she turns around with her pink jacket, and she's just like, oh, she sees that the camera caught her face. And I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you get into an altercation out in public. Which, by the way, almost happened to me last night. I went bowling with my family. Uh, we went to a bowling alley which is where you typically go bowling, Zach. Um, and so I went to the bar to get a drink and there's this guy and he's lit. He reminded me of, did you guys see the video over the weekend? Um, Shelby and Dolly, where there were the two gays and they were at the airport and it's American. Of course, it's fucking American Airlines, right? Um, they're at American Airlines and one of them's just like throwing a tantrum about how American Airlines fucked them over again. And then the husband's like, get it together, get it together. And he's like, no, everybody, I'm going to tell you our story about how American Airlines fucked me over again. And then the the little husband, he's like, Shelby and Dolly, shall, remember the girls, the girls, we have to get home to the girls. Remember the girls. And he's like, Shelby and Dolly, remember their names, Shelby and Dolly. And I'm like, it's a fucking crazy video, right? They're like, what like this is literally the collapse and the downfall of society like the, the this is what our world has become and so homeboys on a bender right just like flipping out they're both slurring he's like shall we i mean so dramatic i'm like can you not give gay people a bad name <sighs> it's bad enough we take things up our butts and now we gotta act like this in public um so yeah it's bad enough we have to douche but anyway Shelby and Dolly, I found out later, which at first I was like, oh, man, they're trying to get home to their daughters. Shelby and Dolly, they're fucking dogs. I was like, oh, my God, you know, you're even more embarrassing. If I ever, if I ever did that with Sky and Sully, if I was like, Sky and Sully, remember the boys, remember the boys, Sky and Sully. That's when you know it's time to put me down. It's time to put me down because that is just not a healthy contribution to society. And I don't want any part of that. Thank you very much. Um but yeah, so the guy from last night at the bowling alley, we'll get back to Ian Zering. You know, I have to go on tangents sometimes, um, especially when there's not a lot of tea, then I just give you stories. But so last night I had, you know, Shelby and Dolly's uncle at the bar at the bowling alley. And so I'm walking up to order another drink. And then, you know, Shelby and Dolly are right there and not the real ones. But so he's in like a button down shirt with short cut off with. Yeah, they were short cut off jean shorts. Okay. And then he had cheetah print boots on. And I'm just like, oh my God. First of all, when I saw him, I was like, what is that outfit? I thought, yeah, okay. That was a choice. And then I hear him tell the, the bartender, it's been 20 minutes. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Would, would you like a refund then? He's like, you know what? He thought about it. He's like, yeah, I actually would like a refund in my hand. Like, why did you offer him a refund? Like, he, of course, he was going to jump at that opportunity. He clearly, you know, can't afford pants. So he has to wear cut off jean shorts. And so he's like, yeah, I want a refund. It's been 20 minutes. I'm like, eh, where are you going? Clearly, the bar is your favorite place. So like, where are you going? Calm down. 
and he's going off on her and he's just like Ugh. and she's like okay would you like me to check you out then and he's like yeah uh hello, credit cards do you know how credit cards work you just swipe them and she's like yes but do you want me to close you out and he's like yeah do it like he was just going so hard on her and i just turned to him i'm like listen dude you can tone it down okay like she's doing her best and he's like excuse me I was like, oh, hey, on here comes Shelby and Dolly. Shelby and Dolly are coming out now, which I also just learned are characters in Steel Magnolias. But um, learning a lot this week, coming into the new year strong. And then he gets up and he's like, and look at you with your tacky shoes. And I look down at my shoes and I'm like, it is a bowling alley. And I am wearing bowling shoes, yes. And he's like, and your highlights, look at you. I'm like, first of all, they're not highlights. They're just grown out bleach, you know, I'm, I'm blonde and I decided to paint in some roots because, you know, I did, I wanted to make people believe that my hair is not naturally platinum, but it really is. But I painted in a little root and he's like going off me. He's like, don't come for me unless I sin for you. And I was like, I'm not coming anywhere near you. Okay. And he's just like, mm, you want to come and talk to me? And he's going off. Right. I'm just like, have some water, you're drunk. And he's still going off on me about my my hair and, you know, my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. And he's going off about everything. I'm just like, have some water, you're drunk. Have some water, you're drunk. And then um, I was, like, not looking to fight with him. I wasn't even drunk enough to get into a fight, even though it sounds like it would have been a great great way to start off my new year. Um, but listen, like Lent, I've decided that I'm coming into this new year and I'm going to try to not fight with people. I'm going to try to be very calm and level-headed and, you know, very zen. I'm going to be zen when, okay? I'm going to be not crack sack. I don't know. What's a good name for me? Um, this is going to be a new year. I'm, I'm coming into this year a brand new bitch. I put in all the work in 2023 and get ready because a phoenix is emerging, everybody. A phoenix is about to fucking emerge. And I'm going to try to come into this year a little more zen. Zen Zach. But so Ian Ziering did not have a great zen, zen when moment because <sighs> it was just, it was a lot. I like the picture you put on your story with the black hair. What picture with the black hair? I didn't put on picture with the black hair. What picture did I put on my story? Of me with black hair? All the pictures that I posted to my story have been pictures of me recently. And I have not had black hair. Um, okay. But so, I and Zeering, it was the other day. What, what was the picture of? Was my dick in it? Um, Okay. Ian Searing was attacked and now he's speaking out. Okay. He posted, I was feeling for him. Okay. I was feeling for Ian Searing, but then he goes on Instagram and posts an Instagram reel, which is a selfie of himself with a caption over it. It's a filtered selfie, by the way. And the song he puts to it is A Sky Full of Stars by Coldplay. which was a choice, you know, an interesting choice. The lyric, I mean, the lyrics for it, I just pulled them up. Um, I don't care, go on and tear me apart. I don't care if you do, because in a sky, because in a sky full of stars, I think I saw you. I don't care, go on and tear me apart. I don't care if you do, because in a sky, because in a sky full of stars, I think I see you, you, which is just, again, an interesting choice to put to that. But so then he has the caption. I'll read it for you. You know, it's very long, but, you know, he decided to use this as a teachable moment, a lesson that we can all learn from. He writes on his Instagram. <clears throat> Yesterday, I experienced an alarming incident involving a group of individuals on mini bikes. That was the funniest part is they weren't even like you would think like the, the headline is like some bikers attacked Ian Ziering. They were mini bikers. OK, they were a big lady on a mini bike. And she was doing her best. Um, I need to stop making fun of this lady. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just listen. It was a punchline and it was funny. And then people are like, don't laugh at fat people. I'm not laughing at fat people. I'm just laughing at them when they're on mini bikes no i'm kidding sorry sorry don't cancel me it's 2024 it's a new year forgiveness forgiveness is more than saying sorry okay yesterday i experienced an alarming incident 
involving a group of individuals, I'm going to get so dragged, in a group of individuals on mini bikes. While stuck in traffic, my car was approached aggressively by one of these riders leading to an upsetting confrontation. In an attempt to assess any damage, I exited my car. This action unfortunately escalated into a physical altercation, which I navigated to protect myself. First of all, if you watch, if you watch the video, I get it. This was like approved by an attorney, right? Because we want to make sure that he doesn't get sued because now that they know it's Ian Searing, then they can sue him for assault, right? Because they think he has money, which I'm sure he does. Wasn't he doing like Chippendales for a minute? He can go do another zombie movie and, you know, make some coin. Good for him. But he says, in an attempt to assess any damage, I exited my car. This action unfortunately escalated into a physical altercation, which I navigated to protect myself. But if you actually watch the video that TMZ released, <clears throat> He exited, he does exit the car, yes, but then he like approaches one of the men and pushes one of the men. So he made the first kind of hit I, for, I, that I don't think, you know, warrants a gangbang, but like, you know, I think all of them coming on him was very aggressive, you know, only if you like it, right? Then you let a whole gangbang come on you. But in this case, he said this action unfortunately escalated and he didn't want it to escalate. So he said, no, 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 no means no, I don't consent to this. And he said he navigated to protect himself, which he was kind of just like fighting back and then ran. That was, you know, the way he navigated it. He said, I am relieved to report that my daughter and I are both completely unscathed, but the accident has left me deeply concerned about the growing boldness of such groups who disrupt public safety and peace. I agree with him. This situation highlights a larger issue of hooliganism on our streets and the need for effective law enforcement responses to such behavior. I didn't even know hooliganism was a word, but that's the word of 2024, hooliganism. If it weren't for you and you hooligan kids, as a citizen and as a parent, I find it unacceptable that groups can freely engage in this kind of behavior, causing fear and chaos, while the response from authorities seems insufficient. Again, he did kind of make the first hit attempt. Uh, his daughter's 12 years old. She's 12 years old, so she was kind of watching all of this as it was going on. He did end up going up to her afterwards, and he's consoling her, and people are still taking photos of all this shit. I'm like, why don't you check on the girl, right? Why don't you check on the man that just got gangbanged in the street, you know? I agree. I don't like this hooliganism either, but, you know, I'm not. I'm a citizen. I'm not a parent, but I also find it insufficient that these hooligans just run the streets wild. I have always been an advocate for standing up against intimidation and misconduct, and this incident reinforces my beliefs in the importance of personal and community safety. We must address the underlying issues that lead to such disruptive behavior and ensure that our streets are safe for everyone. I urge city officials and law enforcement to take decisive action against such lawlessness and provide the necessary resources to prevent future occurrences. I am thankful for the support of my family, friends, and fans during this time. It's in challenging moments like these that the strength and unity of our community are most vital. Happy New Year in a sky full of stars. <sighs> it's very dramatic. I'll just tell you that. He's definitely one for the theatrics. It's very, very dramatic. But also, he makes it seem like these hooligans just came and started attacking his car. And so he got off and then they started beating him up. He forgets that he was also part of the hooliganism when he got out of his car and approached the man and pushed him. I That's why I never like to approach a man and push him. You know, you just you never know when he's going to have a gangbang of triage mini bikers that are going to come after you. So. Sorry. But I would suspect now that these mini bikers might want to take legal action and press charges against him because he did make the first hit. But they did chase him into the street and across the street. And they were, like, going after him. across. Like, listen, I don't agree to that hooliganism. But, like, Ian Ziering was a bit much. That could have gotten so much worse had a weapon come out. Yeah. Homegirl in her pink jacket pulled out her phone. And she was, like, using that to, like, hit upon him. And I'm like, what are you hooligans doing? Jesus. So. Yeah. I tend to, you know, approach confrontation. See, it just it's my comfort zone <laughs> fighting is my love language um but you have to pick and choose your battles and sometimes a, a group of mini bikers is just not the battle you want to choose on a new year's eve but he's safe he's unscathed i mean they did they were coming at him pretty aggressively i will say that they were coming pretty hard but we'll see there you go stay in your car and call 911 looking for a spot on tmc yeah 
that pic looks so dramatic. Yeah, it's a selfie of him. And it's like, it's a cute selfie. Like, I mean, he was probably saving it in the bank. And he was like, Oh, today's a good day to post this. And so, you know, he's like, if I'm going to be the face of, you know, anti hooliganism, then at least this is the picture that they use. And they did. So there we go. Good for Ian's here. And he's alive. He survived. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop up. I'm going to work harder. Um, okay. Isn't his name pronounced Ian? No, it's pronounced Ian. It, it looks like it's Ian. And you would think, oh, yeah, Ian, that is an appropriate way to spell and pronounce that name because that's typically how you spell and pronounce Ian. But it is not Ian. It is Ian. His mom just spelled it wrong. Okay. That said, let's move on to what else happened? Oh, Kathy Griffin got divorced. I didn't even know she was married. But, you know, maybe she wanted to decapitate him too. And he said, no, no, no. And then she's like, all right, peace. So, I mean, listen, I, I don't think when relationships end, it's great. Like, I'm not like parading their divorce, but that was news. Um, and then in other relationship news, we also have Mia Thornton from Real Houses of Potomac, she posted a photo. Also very dramatic. Like, everyone was just into the theatrics this New Year's. Um, oh, wait, that's Ian. We had Mia. And Mia posted this photo. She's, like, getting out of, like, a large SUV. It looks like it could possibly, it's, like, a Suburban or an Escalade. I don't know. I don't know cars. I'm sure somebody can see the side of this car and, like, know exactly what it is. And good for you. But she is, like, she has her leg. They're out coming outside of the car door. And they're kissing. You don't see his face. So we don't really know who he is. But she has her leg wrapped around him. And he's wearing a jacket. Or it looks like like a hoodie. A zip up hoodie. I don't know. Some, yeah, it looks like a, a hoodie. And it says, the, our darkest hours make your brightest days. And they're like kissing. And then people like zoomed into it. She, she's wearing a really interesting like zebra outfit. And people zoomed into the photo and saw that she had a ring on her left finger. Her, her, so people thought that she was engaged. And a source has come out and shared with page six. That's not true. She's not engaged. So she's not getting married to anybody else. She's still divorcing G because he doesn't have any more money. So she went to find a new young buck to slum a buck off of. She's not engaged, though, everybody. She's not engaged. That has been made clear via page six. So love is alive and she's living out her life. Vanderpump Villa is coming to Hulu very soon. It actually looks good. So I remember when um I remember when they first announced this show. And I was like, this looks stupid. I don't think anybody's interested in like wanting to see a reboot of Vanderpump Rules and it's based in like Europe. Well, that's not the case because now it appears she signed her deal, but she released the first trailer and it, the show comes out and it just says spring 2024. There's no real release date, but it actually looks good. So she, it looks like she's training all, of, it's kind of like below deck, like below deck means Vanderpump Rules, but in a villa, that Lisa Vanderpump is running. So it looks like she's renting out the villa and they're just kind of the staff that works at the villa. I don't know if it's like a hotel style villa or if it's like a villa, like a whole villa that you rent out that like, you know, would be like below deck style where like they rent out a yacht and it's them and their group of friends and whatever. I assume it's that where, cause like when the women have gone on trips in the past, primarily to like Europe or wherever they go, they usually remember they got like a castle or they get like a nice villa and there's usually a staff there. And so she's training these people. She says, I pulled them from the best restaurants and kitchens and bars from all around the world. I'm like, no, you didn't. You cast some really hot people that are going to make great television. And we appreciate you for that. But so she gathered around the best of the best for Vanderpump Villa. And they're all young and they're all making out with each other and they're all banging each other. And it actually looks entertaining. It's shot very beautifully. The cinematography is great. The, you can tell like there was a budget, like Bravo, like there's doing it. And then there's Vogue as Erica would say. So I think Lisa is doing Vogue and I 
look forward to checking it out. I don't know, but like overserved when she had that overserved looked good. Um, and it was okay. It was her like talk show on E where she would have people come over for dinner. And then she also had Vanderpump Pets that was a total flop. Wasn't that also on Hulu? That was a total bomb. Nobody watched Vanderpump Pets. Vanderpump Pets, yeah. And that was about like, well, I mean, who wants to watch a show about a dog adoption place? Like, nobody cares about that, right? I mean, a villa where they're all going to sleep together. Like, you can't bang in front of the puppies. You can't do that. But at least you can do it in the villa. And it's a nice villa. Like, why not? Right? I wouldn't want to work in that villa. But I would definitely bang a few of those dudes for sure. Why not? Live life. It's 2024. We're taking risks this year. We're living life this year. Let's get into it. Um, so yeah, we can look forward to Vanderpump Villa. And then tonight is the finale, the big bombshell reveal finale for uh, Salt Lake City, which is exciting. They released a new teaser, which looked really good. Um, it was all the women and they're being asked about why this season is the best season. And they're like, it's trauma. And then Monica's like, it's me, bitch. I'm the reason it's the best season. So it looks good because Heather. So I do think it is about Monica being behind the bot accounts. And I think she was digging up dirt on all the ladies and was leaking information and was um, harassing them online. I think all of that Monica was behind it. I think that really is the big reveal because in the last few seconds of this like clip, you hear Heather say some things here. Let me, I'm going to play it again right now. You probably won't be able to hear it on mic, but um, I want to play it so that, why is it not letting me play? Um, oh. Okay. So they all talk about why it's the best season. And then you have the, the final clips, right? Theme is Bermuda Triangle. We're still in Bermuda. And then we have the moment where Heather's like, I'm freaking the fuck out. I have information confirmed today. She's like, guys, get out of my room. I'm having a moment. She's someone that has schemed. Heather wants to confront her because she's not our friend. And then everyone's yelling and like, what is it? What's the secret? What's the reveal? Heather says, proof, timeline, everything to prove that you are a fucking bully. And then Heather says, I cannot believe it's her. So for her to call them a bully makes me think it is the troll accounts, and that's the big reveal. So I don't think it's related to the Beauty Lab and Laser um, lawsuit. I think the lawsuit was maybe as a result of this, but... This is, if there's ever going to be an episode that you're going to watch, this is the episode to watch because it's good. It's going to be good. I cannot wait. I am excited. Um, I will be recapping it on Wednesday evening here on YouTube. So if you want to catch the live recap, I will be here recap, breaking it all down. I'm excited. I'm ready for it. I think they're going to drag Monica. I just, I'm confused about the black eye piece because Andy, and it was even revealed in the description of the episode, that new light about Heather Gay's black eye from last season comes to light. So I'm assuming that's after. So there's, I hear there's Bermuda, but then there's other stuff that comes to light after Bermuda. Bermuda is just like the big moment where, you know, they, I guess, find out about Monica and then eventually um, maybe they do more digging. I don't know, but something more comes off. So we'll see. I don't know if Monica can even come back next season because nobody's talking to her. Well, Mary Cosby said she would come back to defend Monica. <laughs> Remember, it was at um, was it Kathy Hilton's uh, Christmas party. And Mary's like, I would come back to defend Monica. Which is curious, but it looks like Meredith might also kind of still be Team Monica-ish. I don't know how the reunion went. But I think they can bring Monica back, right? They have to. If Monica's like this much of a catalyst on the show, I just want to know. I'm I'm like not invested in the black eye, but at the same time, I do just want to fucking know. Well, like, can we just tell us? Like, you dragged it out this long. Can you just shoot your shot? Because at this point, like, I want to go to bed, you know? Are you close? We'll find out tonight. 
I think that's all I have for you guys. But thank you. Appreciate you. Um, I hope you have a lovely, lovely start to your new year. I will be back here tomorrow. A very special surprise for you guys that I don't think you're ready for. I think you are ready for it. I'm ready for it. So get ready because tomorrow I do have a very special surprise that I haven't told anyone about. So it's going to be, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, what? So definitely give me a follow at Just Plain Zach all over the internet. Don't forget to follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach on Instagram. And um, yeah, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for letting me um, share my mornings with you. You bring me so much joy. I hope I bring you so much joy as well. Someone in my Instagram DMs actually sent me. I posted... um, I posted this message on my Instagram story. It says, you have everything you fucking need. Oh, actually, I'm going to take these extra few minutes and I'm going to read this that I posted on my Instagram story. Um, It said, I think the next plot twist is that things are about to get really good. I think this world is going to open up for you in unimaginable ways. I think you're walking into your best chapter yet. And finally, you're going to see where all of this has been leading. Your hard work hasn't been for nothing how you keep showing up, how you keep picking yourself back up, how you never give up on this dream, this vi- this vision, this feeling deep within you that says this is for you, how you never give up on yourself. All along, it was paying off in ways you couldn't see. And even when you couldn't find the proof in the outside world that anything was working out, you listened to your heart's wisdom and continually leaned into faith and trust. But now, now you're going to see it, the proof, the illumination of something more beautiful than you can even imagine. You're going to see where the universe has been guiding you and it's going to be better than you can possibly know. And I hope everybody goes into this year with that energy. This then prompted another woman, um, Alyssa, to then DM me and she said, thank you for being a gorgeous, excellent, brilliant tool of the universe and confirming my gut instinct. And I responded to her and I said, I'm merely a manifestation of the messages and signs you're ready to receive. And I hope everybody knows that. Anytime anybody gives me any sort of compliment in that way, I'm always like, listen, you're re- whatever you're getting from me is just a mirror of what you're ready to receive based off of your own manifestations. Maybe that's when people come in here and they want to troll in the comments. I'm like, listen, you're, you're, your energy is a little off. Like you need to you know, go do some yoga, go do some meditation or something. But just know this can be a good year. Maybe it was a shitty year last year. Maybe it started off shitty this year. It's all about perspective. It's all about how you respond to things. And it's all about just like staying focused on the vision and staying focused on heading towards what's ahead of you and not focusing on what's behind you. Even if you do have a bad day, you can always think of three things that you are grateful for in this moment, from this week, from this day. Sometimes it can be as simple as, you know what? My coffee didn't burn my tongue and it actually actually tasted kind of good. Or you know what? I found a quarter and I need a million more of them. But you know what? That's a little spark that there's money all around me and I can trust that, you know, I will find another quarter somewhere. You never know. Just the small pleasures, the good things keep your mind focused on the positivity and, and keep you in a state of gratitude. So remember that. All right. I love you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.